In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at our second Winter Thoughts video. I think it's our second one. It might be our third one. I, I don't really know at this point. But we're going to be taking a look at the precipitation forecast, the updated precipitation forecast here from the CFS model, and then our updated temperature forecast as well from this very same CFS model because we do have a big update with this one. Just like in the last episode, we're actually just going to work our way through all the months. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and show you guys all of our uh updates as far as you know the fall time the summertime, and even into the winter time so we're starting out here we are taking a look here at our uh july 2022 precipitation forecast and it is looking a little bit more dry here in the eastern united states for a lot of these areas that i just circled in uh, there is some areas like the northeast and the southeast where there is some precipitation expected and even the south central up to the four corner states as well all of these areas are expecting quite a bit of above average precipitation in the month of July, but for the other areas, not so much. August, things do get a little bit more uh, heavy with the precipitation down here in the southeast. It is important to note that one tropical system could completely disrupt this forecast, and obviously two months out, this model cannot forecast a tropical system happening or not happening. So it is really, really hard to determine for the southeast and even the east coast here. But for areas that are further inland, like Missouri, uh, that's not going to have an impact on this quite as likely, obviously. Now, as we move towards September, we have above average precipitation expected here for the eastern United States, as well as the kind of northeast and upper Midwest. All of these areas expect an active storm track to start getting going in September, potentially nor'easter slash clipper type storms. Obviously, no snowstorms with those in September, uh, but we can still get the same storm track, which would lead towards quite a bit of rainfall. We see a more dry western seaboard here, expected for September as well. It's also worth noting. Now, for October, uh, it kind of flips. As you can see, we expect more precipitation here for the west coast and a lot less for the areas in the western and the central United States. It's really interesting how that just completely flipped there, but... I mean, that happens from time to time, obviously. When we look at November, we see that the Northwest is expecting quite a bit of precipitation as well as the New England states here. But for the Southeast and the South Central United States, much more dry than what is typically expected to happen for the month of November, which is pretty darn interesting, obviously, here coming from the CFS model. Now for December, we see quite a bit of precipitation here in the Northern United States near normal for a lot of these areas and then above normal here for the northwest and then for the southern United States here we see mostly dry conditions uh, so that's going to be interesting as we're heading into the first month of the winter time we're seeing those dry conditions prevail uh, January here we see more dry for the west coast uh, and more dry for the southeast corner as well outside of the very far southeast where there is some above normal precipitation expected and then it's mostly near normal for a lot of these regions in between. Now, as we approach the month of February, we see above normal temperatures for a lot of these regions up here in the northern and western United States, but still the deep south and the southeast dealing with these more dry conditions. Then for the month of March, more precipitation for a lot of areas outside of the southwest and the southeast still dealing with those dry conditions. Very, very interesting stuff there. Now, let's take a look here at our temperature forecast real quickly. And as you can see, we expect above normal temperatures for a lot of folks here in the month of July, including the eastern seaboard in the southeast, as well as the western United States and the north central United States. It's really just this four corner states region that has some below normal temperatures expected. For the month of August, it's really torchy, okay? We have from coast to coast above normal temperatures expected, especially here in the deeper south and in the plains, which is going to be really, really oppressive because those are areas that are already pretty hot. So to have above normal temperatures in this region is pretty uh, crazy, to say the least. Now, for the northeast as well, we expect pretty far above normal temperatures. Northwest, we're also seeing very, very similar conditions. Washington, Oregon, California also dealing with these types of conditions. A lot of folks dealing with above normal temperatures basically outside of North Dakota and a bit of Montana there for the month of August. As we move into September, things shift a little bit further eastward. Uh, we have probably... A lot of ridging going on in the western and the eastern United States. A lot of warmth heading up into the east. A lot of warmth heading up into the west. And a bit of a trough here heading into the central United States. That seems to be the prevailing overall pattern for the month of September here. That this model is trying to get at. 
you have to see if this continues to be the trend as we head forward. But this is obviously the first month of the fall time. Uh, so that is pretty impactful, those below or above normal temperatures. Now, as we approach October, it looks like there's a very big ridge here in the west and then hardly a trough in the east. But there is more cold air making its way into the east here than the west, it appears. It appears like the pattern will try to be a trough in the east at times and definitely a more prevailing ridge there in the west. Seems to be the pattern that I'm seeing here for October according to this CFS model. The most recent update here on June 17th is what this one comes from. I'm making this video on the 18th and it's coming out on the 19th. So I know that's confusing, but uh, pretty um, weird dates there. But we can see that for the month of November, this model gets really torchy with it. Maybe a little bit of cold air making its way into the west, a big ridge in the central United States, and then maybe some cold air at times making it to the eastern seaboard. Uh, but that warm air over the central United States would be really, really impactful uh, and would definitely shake up the pattern to say the least. Now let's get to the actual winter time. It looks like a big ridge in the west seems to be uh, likely and then less troughs in the east, but at times it appears like that trough will mostly go to the east here. Uh, and I know that this is what this model's thinking only because it's showing the further above normal temperatures out west, which means that more times than not, it'll be above normal temperatures. And for the east, it looks like it'll be above normal temperatures a lot of the time as well. But if I had to pick a side that it looks like would have more below normal temperatures at times, it would be the one that's showing less above normal, which is the east in this case. So I think the east is where the trough will end up being a lot of the times as of this current CFS forecast. And this is only according to the CFS, by the way. I'm not using any opinion here. I'm just showing you guys the raw model data here. We're just going over it together. For January, this is where things get interesting, and it probably makes a lot of you cold and snow lovers a little bit excited here to see the blues popping up for the North Central and a bit of the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes as well. And also, if you're in the whites or the lighter yellows, that means you're probably near normal. So for January, that means quite a bit of cold if you're seeing your normal conditions. Uh, what you wouldn't want to see as a cold or snow lover is the far above normal temperatures, which the only areas that see that is, it looks like, the deeper south and also the west. Um, everywhere else that's in the two lighter shades of the yellow would be very, very close to normal, which would be acceptable to most snow and cold lovers. The pattern looks a bit like this to me, maybe even a little bit more of a trough in the, in the east here. Uh, probably some warm air making its way in at times, but at times not also. A lot of cold air pouring down into these regions and quite a bit of warmth for the west. This seems to be the pattern for this, uh, January, actually, better yet. And I, I wouldn't be surprised at all uh, if we do see quite a bit of larger troughs and larger snowstorms during the month of January with this setup in mind. Now, for February, things warm back up a little bit. It still looks like the trough would be primarily over the east here, um, but not all the time is kind of what this looks like to me. It looks like it would be warm at times as well. And then for March, things really flatten out um, where the trough could go either way. There will probably be a trough in the west at times during March. There will also probably be a trough in the east at times during March. Um, but overall, it looks like it will be more warmth than cold for the month of March. So the only real cold looking month here was January uh, on this entire model run. Everything else looks near normal or slightly above normal. But I hope I was able to kind of show you guys where I think the trough would be on any given month according to this model. I hope there was some useful information here as we just broke down this latest CFS model run. We will be making more updates like this for you guys on, on a later date. Uh, and I hope you guys are excited for that. Obviously, we're going to start to make more and more of these as the year progresses. So stay tuned for that as well. So be sure to subscribe uh, and also leave a like down below as well as a comment. For today's confidence tab, we're at a 2 out of 6. Uh, only because, well... You know, it's pretty long range uh, uh, model guidance here. So there's good reason for us to be at a two out of six. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lerla Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I'd also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Neil Mohamed, Michael Kodalesa, Catbite, Charleston, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Glacey also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.